They have had the White House so long that they've run out of energy, run out of ideas, run out of direction, and they ought to be run out of town. And with your help, we can. Bill Clinton was the first rock and roll president. The saxophone playing governor from Arkansas had run a youthful campaign. He revealed on MTV what type of underwear he favored while outrunning whispered allegations of extramarital affairs. I was Bill Clinton's lover for 12 years. There is a school of thought that Bill Clinton really wanted to be a rock star, but he'd settle for being president of the States if he could, if he could live like a rock star. Number 42, Bill Clinton, Democrat, 1993 to 2001. 46 years old, from Arkansas. Bill Clinton's election fulfilled a lifelong ambition for a poor kid from the wrong side of the tracks who was determined to become president. As a politician, he was a natural. Clinton was the most seductive and charming person I've ever seen in national politics. He could be in a room of a hundred people and make each person he talked to feel like he was directly uh, boring into that person's soul. He's famous for his handshake. It's not just a handshake. He grabs your hand and then his other hand moves up your arm and pretty soon he's enfolded you in a giant embrace. He was just kind of all embracing bear of a man. Clinton was a Yale Law School graduate and a Rhodes Scholar. His empathy, captured in the catchphrase, I feel your pain, was legendary. So was his appetite for junk food. How is that? I need it, yeah. I'm eating an apple fritter right now. Bill Clinton's management style was chaotic. His White House was known for casual dress, crowded meetings, and all-night bull sessions. He is so interested in different viewpoints that he could have 60 people in a room and be willing to listen to every one of them because he might just find a different clue as to something he hadn't thought about. One viewpoint Clinton clearly valued was his first ladies. Hillary Clinton was the first presidential spouse to have an office in the West Wing. And to some members of the staff, it seemed like there were two presidents. You could take an issue to the president, and if he said no, you could appeal to the first lady, and maybe she would say yes, and then maybe you could get her to get him to change his mind. Neither are those people. Clinton's first two years in office saw the failure of the administration's health care reform initiative and the signing of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Thanks in part to the vehemence of Clinton's political enemies, the young presidency was already being defined by the types of investigations and scandals that would eventually consume it. Travelgate, Whitewater, and the filing of a sexual harassment lawsuit against the president by Paula Jones. In the 1994 midterm elections, a resurgent Republican Party gained control of both houses of Congress for the first time in 40 years. He was clearly depressed by the loss that had taken place. Everybody figured he was finished. They underestimated what a good politician Bill Clinton is. Clinton made a move towards the political center, using public opinion polls as his guidepost. But he was challenged at every step by his newly minted nemesis, Republican Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. In some ways, Newt Gingrich was a great gift to Bill Clinton, much as the malefactors of great wealth were to Teddy Roosevelt, or Douglas MacArthur was to Harry Truman. It was in the budget negotiations late in 1995 that the battle between Clinton and Gingrich came to a head. With the threat of a government shutdown looming, Gingrich tried to force Clinton into making concessions on Medicare and education spending. But the president refused to compromise. At that point, I said to myself, the president gets it, because in politics you really do have to draw a line. And at that point, he understood that he had to draw a line. And I think it was a turning point in the presidency. Clinton's risk paid off. He was able to paint Gingrich and the Republicans as the cause of the government shutdown, forcing them to an eventual budget compromise. It was a great political victory. But during the shutdown, most of the paid White House staff was sent home, which allowed an unpaid intern named Monica Lewinsky to get unusually close to the president. With his convincing re-election in 1996, Clinton's political comeback was complete. Taking advantage of the booming American economy, he was now able to steer Congress to balance the federal budget for the first time since Andrew Jackson's presidency. Then the bubble burst. In August 1998, 
Clinton's Oval Office affair with Monica Lewinsky became public when the former intern was called to testify in the Paula Jones sexual harassment case. That was the beginning of Lewinsky Gate and the scandal that just totally consumed Bill Clinton's presidency. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. When you make a mistake, you got to fess up and do it fast. If he had said, I made a mistake with this young woman, I'm sorry, it would have been controversial, been hard. But I think the country would have rallied to him and we could have been spared the impeachment process. Instead, on December 19, 1998, Bill Clinton became only the second president in history to be impeached. As had happened with Andrew Johnson 130 years earlier, the momentum of the impeachment process sputtered when it came time to vote him out of office. Neither the American public nor the United States Senate found Clinton's lying about his sex life to be an adequate reason for his removal. I think a hundred years from now, historians are still going to be scratching their heads on the question of the impeachment of Bill Clinton. Was it an impeachable offense? Well, it was impeachable only because it was caught up in the strange and bitter politics that really defined the 1990s. It was a dangerous sideshow because while we were all concentrating on Bill Clinton's sexual peccadilloes, Osama bin Laden in the mountains of Afghanistan was preparing a plot that was going to kill 3,000 Americans. Having survived impeachment, Clinton did what he could to salvage the remainder of his presidency. He lent American military might to a NATO effort that halted an ethnic cleansing campaign in Kosovo. And he made a bold but unsuccessful effort to revive the faltering peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. By the time he left office, Bill Clinton had presided over the longest economic expansion in American history. Yet his legacy will always be clouded by his impeachment. You're not going to have kids queuing up in Little Rock at his presidential library to see the NAFTA pen under glass. Um, people look for drama in history, and the great drama of the Clinton years, unfortunately, was his impeachment problem and the Lewinsky scandal. And um, that's what he has to live with.